All right, Matthews. Did I say Matthews? Mathletes. <laughs> so I made this worksheet for you, the Central Limit Theorem worksheet. And me and one of my best friends were talking. Uh, you might know him. Uh, his name is ChatGPT. And we we're creating this worksheet together. And I was designing it uh, so that you would really understand, have a better understanding of what you're doing this week as our topics get a little bit more involved. And uh, the feedback that I've been getting from folks that have been coming to office hours and in person and online is that these videos where I show you how to do things step by step are really helpful. And the tutors have been saying the same thing. So I want to build on that. All right. So check this out. I helped create a central limit theorem work worksheet. And I really want to help your development and of how you lay things out. So make sure you write all this down. This is worth 10 points um, as you're turning this in. And for those of you who aren't in my class, this is going to be helpful uh, in building your understanding of the central limit theorem as well. Okay. So notice here uh, we have a company and it's going to manufacture light bulbs. And the lifetime of the light bulbs is normally distributed with a mean of 1,000 hours and a standard deviation of 100 hours. All right. So one thing I'll right away underline is that these are normally distributed because that's going to be one of the criteria. And at the very end, uh, I'll get to it, but at the very end, I give you the central limit theorem reminder of the criteria. So either N has to be normally distributed. If it's not normally distributed, then our rule of thumb is N has to be, our sample size has to be greater than 30. All right, greater than or equal to 30. So in this case, we're cool because it, it is normally distributed and it's bigger than 30, right? But only one of those has to be met. In this case, both of them are met, those criteria. All right, so it says, what's the probability that the sample mean a lifetime of these 36 light bulbs is greater than 1,025 hours? So here, what I'm paying attention to is that we're looking at X bar. What's the probability that X bar? In all those previous examples that we did in our last sections, uh, we were looking at the probability of one thing happening. So we were looking at the probability of just X happening. Now we're talking about, hey, what's the probability of X bar taking place? Uh, X, in this case, X bar, the sample mean um, being greater than this number right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk my way through this um, because I wanna make sure you're paying attention and you're listening, all right? Because a lot of people will just fast forward and they just want the answers so they could get the points. So again, so much of it, remember you're paying money uh, not to cheat yourself. So what I compare this to, right? This is your college experience. What I compare this to is going to the gym because, right, we see thousands of people that are paying for gym membership and don't make a single ounce of progress because they cheat themselves. So when you're in education, when you're in school, right, all that time you're investing, make sure you're challenging yourself so you can learn to think more critically, all right? So don't skip out because it only, only hurts you. So, again, make sure you're diving in, you're zoned in, you're not distracted by all these other things. Um, because we all see those people at the benches at the gym, they're on their phone instead of giving themselves minimum rest so they could hit their next reps, right? So go big or go home. <laughs> so here we go. So the population mean, all right? So mu here, they tell us is 1,000, right? Because this is coming from uh, the, uh, the information that they give us. The population standard deviation they give us is 100, all right, our sampling size here, N is 36. And our sample mean, uh, what we're looking at is it's a little bit bigger than 1,000. The sampling mean we're examining is 1025, all right? And the standard error, so what you're gonna see is what you saw in our, our videos is that our standard error is a little bit 
uh, smaller is smaller than your standard deviation that they give you. So what you're doing is you're taking this 100 and you're going to be dividing it by the square root of 36. So the formula is a standard population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And this is our n right here. So here you're going to put um, our standard deviation of 100 divided by, that's why you have to see that slash, the square root of n. And in this case, n is 36. So you're going to have 100 divided by ultimately 6. All right. And that is going to give you your what we call our standard error. Your book calls it the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. All right. So next, now that we have everything labeled, right, get in the habit of always labeling what they give you. Let's go ahead and calculate the z-score. So here's our formula, x bar, which is uh, the, the sampling mean that we found, right? minus the population mean, which we already identified as a thousand. And we're gonna divide that by our sampling error, whatever we got, okay? So again, you're doing these calculations. I'm just helping you through this video, identify all these pieces, all right? So again, I'm helping you label everything. And then you're gonna just put the numbers right here. I left you space to put the numbers. And then you give me your Z-score. All right, step three. Now we're gonna use this Z-score and some technology. So we could calculate the, uh, the probability that corresponds to the z-score that you're looking for. All right, so again, look at what the question asks. What's the probability that the sample mean lifetime of 36 light bulbs is greater than? So greater than. So when you go and use your technology, right, what you're going to be punching in, let's actually, I think I have a calculator right here for you. Let me just make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Yeah, we look good. We look good. All right, cool. Close this. All right, so we have second bars and we have a normal distribution here. So we're looking at two. And we're calculating uh, what it say greater than. So because it said, let me look at the question real fast, uh, is greater than that. So you're going to have some number. I have no idea what that z-score is. I'm just going to pretend here that you get 1.25. I'm just pretending. And since it says greater than, remember that's in, that tells us we're shading everything to the right. So when we have everything shaded to the right, we do 1, E, E, right in second, E, E, 99, nine. and then our z-score is zero, standard deviation is one. When I convert it to a z-score, don't forget that, by right? everything we talked about in our beginning of chapter seven. And then this is gonna give you the probability, but your number is gonna be different uh, because your z-score is going right here. And again, I want you to do the work. So this would represent that probability uh, that we're looking for or step three. So you would write down your z-score and the probability that's associated with that z-score, all right? And here, I, I want you to get comfortable using the correct notation, right? So here, what we're looking at is find the probability that x bar is greater than, boom, 1025. So greater than this symbol, and then you put 1025 right here, but then we're converting our x bar to z because we want to see how many standard deviations is this number to the left or to the right of our mean. And notice this number, 1025, is bigger than the population mean, which was 1,000. So we know our z-score is going to be positive. So we know that our z-score is going to be to the right. Of, so it's going to be bigger than zero. Right? So whatever number, again, whatever number you got for your z-score, that's what you're going to put right here. All right, so again, this is what we're looking for. So I want you to get comfortable with this language. All right, uh, use the z-score that you found. You could also um, use a z-table. I'm not gonna go into that. That's kind of old school. Um, there's plenty of YouTube videos. I think I even have one of how to use the z-table, but 
in real life, right, we're going to be using technology. We're not going to be using these tables. I know a lot of teachers like that, and that's great, but I want to show you, you know, technology is where it's at, all right? So um, whatever we got, that's what we're going to put right here. Whatever your Z-score is, that's what you're going to put right here, all right? So if this is making sense, make sure you hit smash that like button. Just kidding. Uh, and then you can draw a normal curve. So remember, our mean, you put a little tick mark here, put a thousand, and I want you to do one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. So remember, our standard deviation um, for this is not going to be the 100 because we're looking at sampling uh, distribution. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this standard error, whatever number you got here for SE. So once you did that division, let's pretend that number was 10. I'm pretending, okay? I'm not saying that's what it was. So when you're drawing your curve, if that number was 10, right in the middle is your mean, which was 1,000, and then you go up, and it'll be 1,010. You go down, it'll be 990, right? So again, make sure you label everything just like I asked. And then tell me, where is your Z-score on the curve? So what do I mean? Uh, let me show you your textbook real fast. Let me share the textbook with you. So notice um, in our textbook, they give an example. So this is from your ebook. Uh, they found the X value that they were interested in. Theirs was to the left. And then right underneath that, they put the Z-score that corresponds to that X value, right? So they're using the same formula as us. This right here, uh, sigma with a sub X bar, this is SE. This is your standard error, all right? So this is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So wherever I labeled SE, that's what this is, okay? So anyways, so you, on your graph, you're gonna label Z equals, and then whatever number you got um, that corresponds to the X. In our situation, it was 10, what, 1025? Okay, so your graph is gonna look just like this one. Okay, just so that you understand what we're doing. All right, let me share my other screen with you again. All right, and so that's what that means by indicate the z-score on the curve. All right, and so that's all you're doing. It's really fast. And so again, just a reminder, the sample size must be large enough. So our rule of thumb, it has to be greater than 30 if greater than or equal to 30 if they do not tell you that your normal distribution is, or sorry, that your distribution is not normally distributed. So if they don't tell us this comes from a normal distribution, then our rule of thumb is n has to be greater than or equal to 30. All right, so again, things I wanted you to kind of get practice was, I want to make sure you you understand how to label, right, the given information, because that's huge. You can't solve any problem in life unless you know what you have and what they're asking of you, all right? Some people work way too hard, so I don't want you to get in this habit of just trying to get the answer, just trying to get the answer. I want you to learn how to think about what are they asking me and what resources do I have? Uh, I want you to learn to calculate the z-score. We already know how to do that. But again, I want us to tie in what have we learned to this new material. And I want you to graph this information on the normal curve. So notice I'm just giving you one that you're doing all these steps with, right? I just want to show you one time so that you have a really good understanding of what is it that you're doing, all right? Um, and a little quick note. So that's what you're turning in for this worksheet on this assignment right here. All right. Um, just a little note from your ebook. Uh, they're going to, on the homework, there's a homework assignment, a problem, excuse me, where they do things a little different. And so, for example, um, for problem number, doo -doo -doo, let me show you. Where is that? This is from the ebook, but on the homework, it's the same thing. If they ever ask you to calculate, find the 30th percentile. All right. So whenever they ask you for a percentile, 
then of course you still have to identify your mean and you still have to identify your sampling distribution, your SE, right? Because this is what we're going to play into the calculator. But here's the shortcut I'm going to give you. Instead of using this formula that they're going to show you, which you can, we have a really cool program. And so whenever they ask you for a percentile, then we're going to use inverse norm. So let me show you on our calculator what that looks like. Let me pull up my calculator. So on that, when they ask you for a percentile, we go to second bars and we use inverse norm, all right? And so this is what it looks like if you borrowed a calculator from the library, I hope you did. Uh, you could zoom in on your screen just so you could see everything and then punch in. So the area was 30%, right? Because a percentile means everything to the left, right? And uh, our mean for that example, uh, let me grab it real fast. Uh, for their example was 25. So let me punch that in. Uh, so the mean they gave us was 25. And the standard deviation that was calculated was, let me grab that real fast, 0 0.8497, 0.84, 0.8497. And then you just tell your calculator, what side are you shading? And in this case, we're shading to the left because it said percentile. So every time it says find the percentile, you're, uh, that's always to the left, all right? So we hit paste, enter, we get 24.55. So let me take you back to what they did. So they got 24.56. Let me make sure. Um, that's good, that's good, good. And so that's not a big deal for our rounding, so we're fine. Uh, let me go back, let me share the right screen. Make sure I'm looking at the right screen that you're looking at. All right, so that's a little shortcut of how to find the percentile. And you might be wondering, why is the decimal a little off? And again, it's, it's tiny bit off compared to, they're using the table, all right? Um, and we're using technology. We get the same answer pretty much, right? So um, the way I set up your homework is for you to use a calculator to show you the shortcut. You can use a table, um, but I'm not gonna require it. All right, mathletes, I hope this was helpful. Let me know how the homework's going. Don't forget, you've been asking me lots of great questions via email, via Zoom, in person, keep it up. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Peace out, have a wonderful weekend, and go Niners.